first thing they tell you when you have life without is you're here to die. Serve as much time as possible and then die. You're no longer a human, you're just a number, a body. Everything is set up for you to fail. Violence is something that in prison is the everyday norm. We detach from the humanity that's still within us. Anybody hardly smiles around here. It's, it's smile for what? This is the end of the road for a lot of us. Prison reinforces that I'm worthless. Prison is full of traumatized people, people that have been mistreated growing up. I was worse in prison than on the streets. I just didn't care about anything. It's like I got life, I'm gonna die here. I don't care about nothing. My early childhood sucked, teen years sucked, adult life sucked, my whole life sucked. I had given up on myself. Up until getting here and coming to Five Block, everything changed. Jose Flores. Uh, all the guys call me Hoser. I'm here for uh, armed robbery and extortion with uh, multiple enhancements, gun enhancements, gang enhancements. And um, I started with 86 years to life. Basically, if you got a case that carries 10 years, they can add another 10 for a gun enhancement, life for a gang enhancement, and then they double you up because of a strike. You're looking at 60, 70 years on a case that normally carries 10 years. morning. Usually what I hope for when I come to breakfast is that we have cinnamon rolls and that's what we have today. Woo. Cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yes. Overall the food here is uh, two out of seven is good. What's up, bro? So now the gate's opening. We're about to go into education and Go time. Now I grab my laptop and stuff and we hit it. <laughs> On a lot yeah. of the prison yards, they're very strict. You can't bring stuff in or out of the buildings because they don't know what you might have. You know, it could be weapons stashed in there. So, but being that this is a positive program yard and um, again, most of the guys have uh, earned their, their way here. Nobody really wants to mess it up. I always carry my uh, planner to mark things down. I, I try to keep, stay organized. My first semester of college, uh, I struggled. I took five courses and I got like one C and one D. So my professor suggested, you know what, make a schedule, you know, post it to your wall, follow it, hold yourself accountable. And I did that. So the following semester, I took five courses again, got all A's. Ever since then, I've been, I keep planners and I, I follow my schedules and hold the, myself accountable. However, I gotta be honest, I'm a, um, a couple of assignments behind right now for Cal State, but I'm gonna knock them out this weekend. Yeah, I know. Flores? Hey, Flores. 3-7. Manual? Uh, no, uh, Monica. Miss um, Ryan. Clerk. Oh, okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, Valtron. All right. Have a good one. You too. Woo! This is our classroom. If you're not making mistakes, you're not learning, right? And. Um, which is very encouraging because when I was in school, um, I wouldn't raise my hand or I'd you know, hide and hope they wouldn't call on me because I was scared to uh, give the wrong answer and be made fun of, you know, kid guys think, oh, he's stupid, you know? So I wish I would have had an environment like this when I was going to school. 
Good morning, Miss Monica. Good morning. Education is the best way for them to transform their life. They need to have something to focus on to reshape and rebuild their lives. And that is why I chose Mr. Flores. He has been a very positive um, inclusion in my class. And my students are truly inspired by Mr. Flores. So he's a great addition to my class. She gave me that second chance, and um, or first chance, actually. And um, so, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, so I want you to go to building one, two, three, and four. Okay. And then distribute the packets. I'm the teacher assistant, tutor, mentor. I got called into education. On the way out, our professor, Ms. Monica, she calls me into her class. Hey, Flores, come here. And I don't know her. I've never seen her. And she says, hey, I'm so-and-so. She introduced herself. I said, okay, pleasure to meet you. She says, I would like you to be my clerk. I've heard, I've heard a lot about you, and I want you to be my TA. And then she, to she told me her story about how, why she does this work, when I heard her reasons for it and how she wants to transform lives and have these guys go out there and be good fathers, good sons, good husbands, and just break the cycle, right, education. Um, I said, okay, I'm in. I said, but under one condition. I do not want to get paid for this. For many people, the pay number is a big deal because many of them don't have families who can help them. So I get that they, they, you know, this is how they buy canteen and their necessities. For me, it's my way of paying back what I've done wrong. You know, our victims is not just the, the people we harm directly and their families. It's the communities. It's even the taxpayers who have to pay for us to be here. So for me to ask to be paid, I feel like, you know, I'm just, I, I can't, I can't do it. This is every day, you know, for me, if, uh, it feels like, it just feels positive. It feels productive. Like everybody out here is on their way to do some kind of a job or assignment, you know. You know, I never had a job when I was out there. I never had responsibilities. I never paid rent, bills. I, I never did nothing that gave me structure. I have to wake up in the mornings, be ready, come here, and I, I have discipline now, I have structure now. And that in itself is valuable. And I think all of us, every, every guy you see here, they take their job serious. So. Uh oh, you're late, you're going to be in trouble. How are you doing? Good, good, good morning. He came from Pelican Bay also, he's been programming. Like, no, don't say anything. There's another guy. Yeah, you know, you know, you know Pelican Bay, right? You know what's funny is, and when I was in Pelican Bay, right, these guys are like diehard, you know, hardcore officers there, right? And you just see their attitude over there. All the officers are always just miserable and mad, right? And I'm thinking, like, dude, you you get to go home every day. You can do anything you want every day, right? Eat a steak, go here, go hit a strip joint, whatever you want, right? You can even call in and say, hey, I quit and go on vacation for a year, right? And they're miserable. You see us who've been in cages for decades and got life sentences, and we're like happier than them. Like, dude, you know? So that's what I say, man. You see so many people out there who technically are physically free, but they're mentally... Uh, in jail. Right? Because you see... You don't have to be in jail. A lot of people mentally are in jail. It's what you make of it. You're, you're doing your time, you're not on the time doing you. You know, now my cell, I don't look at it as a prison cell, I look at it as my, as my study, my office, right? I'm living in a college campus, it's all what you make of it, right? It's perspective. It's like, uh, look at uh, Five Block, how many lifers and LWAPs got in out, right? I said, how do you think they got out? Because they changed the system, they changed the course, they changed the judges, the officers, the teachers, or they changed themselves. Like I was saying earlier, life is 10% what happens to me, 90% how I react to it. I can see where you're at compared to others. Oh, and no. Never, we never, and we never got a chance to talk before. No. I just see you passing by. Oh, and yeah. And I never got a chance to really talk to you. Okay, right, Beltran, yeah, yeah, man. Thing. Thank you, man. All right. Mom and Dad came here from uh, Mexico. They worked in different factories that would constantly get raided. There was days they... We didn't have money, you know, no food or no hot water or power in our home. 
Throughout elementary, I was just, I was always bullied. I felt like stupid, worthless, and just, I gave up on myself, right? Like, I hated school, hated life, I hated myself. When I got to junior high school, I joined a gang, so I wouldn't be bullied anymore, and it worked. The bullying stopped. But then at 13 years old, I went to juvenile hall, and I've been in and out of the system ever since, you know. Up until getting into college, it's like everything's changed, right? Hopefully people see what this can do, what it's doing. Hey, Ms. Fuentes. Smile, you're on camera. Ms. Fuentes, uh, we come in, I got some uh, assignments for some of the students. We're entering one block. So now, now we're in prison. <laughs> This is how the regular buildings are. And as you could tell, all the doors are closed. All the guys are in prison. So we're gonna see Andrade right here at 139. What's up, Bart? How you doing, man? How you doing, man? Just chilling. What are you up to? Just coming back to medical. How you been, man? Good, good. Did you read this uh, thing from Ms. Monica? Yeah. Actually, you got a couple minutes? Sure. I'm gonna see if we can pop you out real quick. Okay. Um, I, I didn't bring my laptop, but I wanted to go over with you for what I gotta do for Dr. Wong. Okay. So, uh, let me see. Ms. Fuentes, can I uh, get on drive for two minutes? Most of the officers, when, they, when I come, they know that I work in education. So, when I need to speak to somebody, they know it's like legitimate. They're actually very supportive of um, our growth, you know, our transformation. It depends on us too. Well, if we mess it up, then we mess it up. You lose that credibility, you lose that trust. You got to keep that uh, that communication and trust. What's up, man? How you doing, man? How you doing, Art? Uh, this is Art. That's uh, Art Andrade. Hi. He's doing a master's. He's got, what, two more courses? Three? Uh, about a few more, yeah. We're to get his uh, master's for uh, business. So we're discussing with Dr. Wong his class, uh, Communication 4340. Ah, exactly. You're on it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you, man. You know, so we can apply those concepts. Apply that right there. That's perfect. Right? Yes, oh, yes. Yes, that's excellent. Yes, yeah. cultivation theory. We'll reconvene. We'll reconvene, man. In the morning. You know, I got you, man. Thank you, Art. Thank you, sir. Uh, by the way, I'm blind. I can't see without glasses. These guys are a lot younger. Their minds are a lot sharper. Hey, they're schooling me, man. I wouldn't be getting through without them. Now the younger generations are teaching the elders. You know, the teacher can become student going forward I'm excited so I don't I'm good I'm good man I can't wait he's that tangible example and it's giving a lot of uh, a lot of hope to a lot of people they're all talking about the Cal State program now it, before it was kind of like an obscure topic so now he's making it more tangible so that's how I see it that's and that's what I want to do man that's, yeah that's what he's doing that's he's doing goal. he's making people making people ask questions I'll see you later buddy okay Art I'll see you I didn't think I was going to live past 18. I was attending a lot of funerals. A lot of my friends were dying young. And I thought, you know what? When, I, when I'm laying in the coffin, I want to have the gang on my face. You know what I mean? I thought it would look cool. I had romanticized the whole idea of how I wanted my funeral to be. Instead of planning, oh, a high school graduation or what college or what career they want to have, we're planning our funerals. The goal, like I said, it's always make it out the hood, make it out the hood. That's always the goal. You know, why don't we make the goal? Let's change the hood. Let's fix the hood. You know, that's what I want to do. We make it out and then what? We leave all these people behind and then they come in, into these systems and do life sentences and go through all this. No, we, I want to change that. I want to prevent that. I care about them. That's my people. And I'll always tell them, hey, I am you. I am you. I'll tell you a secret, man. I forget that I have these tattoos, right? Like, I've had them for over 20-some years, so I forget I have them. Uh, uh, up until when I look in the mirror, it's like, oh, crap, right? But I think a lot of it, no matter how one looks, 
has to do with your personality as well. Because even when I was on the streets, I'd be at the supermarket standing in line to pay for stuff. And like there's families there, little kids, and even they're friendly towards me like, hey, what's up? You know, like you, they weren't like all scared, like, oh my goodness, right? So I think, I think our aura has a lot to do with it. Like just the vibes, you know, they don't bother me much no more. I just figure, okay, I got to prove myself. So, I, you know, even if I didn't have the tattoos, at the end of the day, just my rap sheet alone, felonies and everything else, that, that's, that's, a, that's a problem. You know, you try and go hire, get hired for a job, your rap sheet's a problem. Tattoos or no tattoos, uh, you try and get housing, having a uh, felony on your record is a problem. Control, two block. I went to a parole consultation hearing. The commissioner told me, with your history, your rap sheet, and the way you look, you're the last person anybody thought would ever get out, should ever get out, or could ever get out. And when you get out, you're a testament for others. It's the same one you've already done. And I've been thinking about that ever since. That's why I want to go for that master's and that PhD. Just be ready Monday. Just show the guys, hey dude, you know, like I said, be the change you wish to see. I say we go to five. Earlier that we're just, the day was just beginning, but right now it should be more active. Here we go, five block. Look at the difference from this building, right? You look around, all the cell doors are open as opposed to the other blocks we just went into. So that's the privilege of being in this block. It's just a whole different vibe, man. Everybody here is doing something. I realized that that's a privilege I earned. It took about, what, 18 years to earn it, but I got it. Christian, what's up, man? Here's one of my mentors. Remember, I was mentioning how I don't know how to work a laptop. I didn't know how to do none of that. This is who I try my best. Oh. Somebody else just got found suitable. Let's go see. Okay, I hear clapping. Let's see what happened. <laughs> uh oh, is that Edwin? Edwin! <laughs> Let's find out how long he was down, man. Edwin! Come here, man. <laughs> He just got found suitable right now. How long ago? Less than an hour ago. <laughs> Bad timing. To <laughs> we caught you. I wouldn't be able to do this without any of the guys here, you know? And that's what I'm appreciative about this and this journey that I'm in because I know I haven't done it by myself. And I'm grateful for everything that I have here and all the opportunities that I've been offered at this institution, at this family that I have here. So I'm thankful. Thank you, man. Hey. I got my arm around him. I could feel his heart beating right here out of his shoulder. <laughs> I lie. I feel it. I lie, man. So, so by first week of April, I'll be home with my wife and son. And for me, my next step is to give away what I have learned through this process of change and this process of transformation to the next man. You know, in order for them to find a pathway. If I could change one person, I mean, th th that'll be my purpose. <laughs> that'll be my purpose. We didn't capture no moments like this in the other blocks. That's the difference in this block. Where are we at, Jack? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we even do that, come here, Jack. Jack finally is the one that got me in here. He had Alwa. Life without the possibility of parole. He was supposed to die in one of these cages, right? Um, 39 years. He just got paroled. He got found suitable after 39 years. Jack, take it away, man. This is the first thing they tell you when you have life without it. You're here to die. That's it. Serve as much time as possible and then die. I was used to the chaos and the madness and all that. But then when we got here, they're like, it didn't matter if I had life without. It was like, you get a chance. You know, we don't care what your sentence was, man. All we want to know is what are you willing to do now? And that's when I started participating and watching all the dogs. I mean, they brought, they brought dogs into a prison, you know, and we we're like, I hadn't touched a dog in more than 30 years. 
for the first time in decades, man, I could actually feel something good. You know, in prison you're taught you hate, you get angry, you, all the all the negative things. When you're around a dog, you know, I had a puppy climb into my my lap, and it was like different. It was like I get to feel again for the first time since I was a child, man. I like fell in love with something. You know, you don't do that in prison. I was finally had a chance to do something to give back. These dogs are going to a family now, you know, and they're writing us and telling us how much they love their dogs. We're doing something right, you know. Well, then other people noticed, then the warden noticed, then Sacramento noticed, then the governor's office noticed, you know, and then one day they called me over and they said, man, look, you know, we're interviewing you for a possible commutation. Less than a year later, they called me back over and said, we're going to commute your sentence from life without to life with. And if the board approves you, you can go home. And now, after 39 years in prison, I'm going to get to go home. Look at the stories we're catching here. As soon as we walked in, we see one guy, because he just got found suitable. We got this guy, 39 years alive. You see the dog, I mean. We have 11 people in this program with paroles, waiting to go home right now. We have a recidivism rate in the program of zero. We've had approximately 90 to 100 different people that have had earned paroles in this program. None of them have come back, none. 33 people have had their census commuted, they've all gone home. None of them have come back. And then we got a bunch of Cal State LA students that have been commuted and out. So that just shows you what's going on at this facility, dude. We can make a strong argument here for doing this in more of the prisons. Then we got this guy. This is Anthony Sneed. Anthony Sneed's been in prison for what? 34 30, years. 34 years. Why don't you tell us about Rambo and what you're doing with it? As you can see, Rambo is a full-blooded German Shepherd. He's the prettiest dog in the program. Um, he's adopted already. He's on his sixth week. And he leaves next week. Rambo coming out. Out. Good boy. Down. Sit. Yes, good boy. Some of these dogs is runaway dogs. Um, they're picked up off the street. And when they adopt these dogs, they have couple of choices. One of the choices is to take the dog home with it or send them to us for six extra weeks where the dogs can be trained. And in that six, six weeks period, we uh, train the dog a number of commands. And that six weeks, the owners uh, come pick them up from the Paws for Life shelter. But other than that, yeah, they come from the shelter and we save them. But I think the dogs save us. I don't really believe we save the dog for the most part. The dogs, they save us, you know, and I'm just happy to be part of the program because it saved my life. So, one of the things that we have here up on the board, it's uh, something that I like to call the vision board. These are all men who were sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, who were sentenced to die in prison, who have since been released, who are out there doing fantastic things. I mean, these are guys that I literally went to chow with, hang out here, train dogs together. This board is so inspiring because it's something that's tangible, it's real. It lets me know, like, I can go home. We can go home. It's about the decisions I make. It's about who I want to be up in here. And it's just amazing to see some of these guys out there, man, and with their kids and their families and just living a productive life. This is the evidence, this is the proof that it exists, man, and it's possible. And I'm just, I'm inspired by this, man. I come in here every single day and I just like to look at this board. I love it, man. So I'm going to give you guys a tour of my cell, my work office actually. So this is my cell, it's pretty plain, um, books, books, um, this is where I hang my clothes. That's the only photo I have up is my mom, my dad, and um, my brother. Um, all three of them, that, they all passed away from COVID.
usually the guys come and borrow books. So they're all real good. Uh, I read the uh, Just for the Day Every Day, Just Mercy, The Deepest Well. This is um, Nadine Burke Harris um, about adverse childhood experiences. That's how I learned the, the problems I had, <laughs> how we show up, verbal judo, uh, the sentences that create us. And I even have uh, kids' books. I, I like to read to my nephews and nieces over the phone. <laughs> and um, right along with Rampage, it's the LA Rams. And Ben and Emma's big hit, it's actually by Governor Newsom. And uh, it's about dyslexia, kids with dyslexia. And I actually got this because um, I, I actually have some, <laughs> some form of dyslexia. I didn't even know it. Also, um, got some photos. This was me and um, my daughter. Um, this was 2017, Pelican Bay was a, a graduation. And this was actually taken four days before I got busted. Um, I was up to no good. You could tell my, I'm wearing a leather jacket. You see the pocket hanging right there, all bulging, all heavy. I had uh, two guns in there and um, <laughs> a few extra clips, right? Um, I mean, that's who I was. I can't, I can't deny it. Eddie, you here? How you doing? What's up, man? Come here, man. Uh, how many? How much time did you have? So I had uh, 14 life sentences, and I did a, to a total of 22 years so far on that sentence. Tell them, uh, um, tell them who just got found suitable recently. Uh, Edwin or myself? You, no, man. Yeah. So I got found suitable uh, early in uh, November. So if all works out the way it's supposed to, I'll be home in March of the, uh, the next year. Right? And uh, none of us want to be in prison forever for the rest of our lives. Gang members, criminals, people that hurt others, right? And uh, given the opportunity, we are going to make good on, on those opportunities, right? And uh, do positive things. And I think that's what you're seeing today is uh, getting a little glimpse of what that looks like uh, when people are given an opportunity to have education, right? Nobody can say it can't be done because we're seeing it. We're going to go back to Ms. Monica's. Oh, yeah. I'll see you. Thank you, guys. Walton 135, you have video court. All these guys here have earned their way here because they've been positively programming. They've done college or com basically completed all the other courses that the other prisons had to offer. And once you complete everything other prisons have to offer, well, that's it. You know, we got to send you somewhere where there's more. And this is that facility. Usually I go back and take a shower, but I bird bath this morning, so I'm set. We're gonna head back to the art room. Let me see. Hey, this is Robert, Robert Lopez. Hi guys. Um, he also came from Pelican Bay, right? And look, now he uh, makes glasses. These are all donated glasses people from out there donated. And through this organization, we refurbish these glasses, check the prescription, and after we're done, we, we box them up, send them back to them, and they will distribute them to third world countries to people that cannot afford glasses. And that's basically the work we do here. Us in here have very few opportunities to actually do something for people out there. We all wrong people out there in her society, and this is one way for us to kind of give back. And it means a lot to us that we can actually help some people see. Like, it's, it's very important. That's another, one of the other reasons this facility is special. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Travis, what's up, man? Hey. What are you working on here? Uh, some butterfly stuff. Something, wow. uh, something girly for the fans. Okay, how long have you been working on that? I just started it yesterday, actually. So uh, this is uh, Healing Through Arts. We have, at any given time, 15 or 16 resident artists. Carlos Tercero over here is our recently found suitable member of Healing Through Art. So, <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> for us, he'll be leaving soon. Yes. But In English or Spanish, it doesn't matter? All right. No, how are you guys doing? Uh, my name is Juan Carlos Tercero. I've served 14 years on a 20 year to life sentence for kidnapping and carjacking. And I joined this art program in 
August of 2013. When I joined this, uh, I didn't know how to paint. From there I just dedicated my time, energy, and dreams to learning this skill. And painting has been, a, it's, it's been healing for me, therapeutic. Also has been a way for me to support myself financially. I paid on my restitution and also through some of my paintings that I donated, I, uh, I contributed to organizations out there. And uh, something that I learned to use to express my emotions, such as anger, frustration, sad, fear, and also to speak about the difficult chapters in my life. Trauma, you know, sexual abuse, uh, bullying, belittlement, domestic violence. And by me talking about these very uh, shameful subjects, uh, helps me to reclaim myself and also connect to my humanity and hopefully open a way for other people who are afraid to touch those subjects to connect and empathize and see that there's a way to reclaim yourself, to accept that those things happen, but overcome them in a way that you know that they don't have no more power over you. Life is just one way ticket. You don't get second chances, so to me it's like, I don't have time to waste time. Not just for me, but for nobody else. This is some of my work. This is about, to me, saying that knowledge is the key to the universe. This one is on a, a mixed media painting, and basically this is about life without the possibility of parole. To me, once we're wearing blues, this is the prison uniform, you're no longer a human, you're just a number, a body. That's very creative, very creative. We got like five minutes to class for college, so I guess we got to take off. I didn't realize we were in here that long. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you guys again. Yes. We're actually a couple minutes late, but he won't mind. He's always in a good mood. He's everybody's favorite. Yeah. Oh, no, 18, 18. Hey, Safari. Welcome. You brought your radio, huh? That's right. Right on. That's right. Oh, this is our professor, Dr. Afari, Cameron Afari. Hello. Um, I, already, I already told him that you're our favorite, so. Oh, no, no, uh, no. This is like the best course I've had yet because we're learning about healing, and every one of us from our, in, in here has been through some form of trauma or another. And this is what we really, when you come to prison, I think you look at a lot of the guys and you think they, they don't need punishment, they need healing, you know? And we're finally getting that. We're actually going to do a warm-up exercise today. So we're gonna ask Hozier to also lead a warm-up exercise as well. Too. No! No, no! Kay, where's Kay at? Taxi! Are you doing a taxi? I don't know. I don't know how they go. I'm gonna mess it up. Okay. Yes. You gotta. You gotta lead the exercises for the to Which kick one? it off. Any of them. No, we want you to do whole Five, uh, taxi three, two, though. one. That way we can get our vocal warm ups ready. We got you. And then we'll do. And then I'll do five. Right. So first of all, oh. thank you. For I just yell out taxi in different tones, and everybody um um repeats it right. But we'll do the location one. That one's okay. cooler. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm in Mexico. You're in Mexico. Hey, hey taxi, nece necesito taxi, aquí. Hey, hey taxi, taxi, necesito taxi, taxi aquí. aquí. Okay, uh, K, New York. Hey, yo, taxi! Hey, yo, hey, yo taxi. taxi! Peter, uh, in the valley. Hey, taxi! Ah! Hey, taxi! <laughs> Uh, uh, Christian, show me, uh, Brazil. Taxi, 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 taxi. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, taxi, taxi. Let's go with Markel. Compton. <laughs> come here, taxi, check it out. Hey, come here, taxi, check it out. Check it out. Hey, we're. Right in front of Cal State LA, getting out. Taxi! Hey, Taxi! 
So after that, anything else we do can't be sillier than that. So we're good to go. This is the same energy we have every class. So right now what we're doing is each chapter is a different concept. And we have to like explain wh wh how the concept works and, and um, through like play performance. Oh, what's up everybody? Yay! So, my name is Edwin. My name is Kasi. Uh, this chapter is on Hip Hop Just Save Me. Sitting in a 9 by 6 box. No metal doors, just automatic bars and concrete walls. Living in a system where we constantly put down so it's hard to stand tall. Plus I'm surrounded by negative influences, drug addicts and cowards. How are we expected to strive? Like animals all we think about is survive. Damn. How did I get here? My tolerance and patience and talents being wasted. It's so hard to move ahead when we're blinded by hatred. Yet the parole board expects and demands me to persevere. Believe me, my desires of rehabilitation are real. But realistic expectations diminish my hope. Misplaced loyalty and dreams distorted by dope. Broken promises, all this shit is a gimmick. So when I hear politicians speak, I hope that they choke. This whole situation's surreal. So every day I pinch myself to remind me it's real. There's some experience there. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, it's not really a question, more of a, I wanna comment on that. I relate it to everything you're saying. We're all in here, so we're going through the same struggle. And often, since we don't talk about our issues, you know, we don't, hear other people say they're going through the same thing or that sometimes we feel like damn it's just me it's just me it's just me but when you hear that it's like hey it's not just me other people and other people relate to it and it helps us I've been working with Jose now for about a year it takes uh, the whole process of redemption very seriously you know this it's not a he's not braggadocious you know about what he's doing he's actually you know super humble and at the same time um, in a way aware of some of the harm that he had done in the past and also very aware that the importance of this kind of work of resignifying your identity in a new way. Yeah. They come um, to this work with uh, a great hunger for ideas. Traditional ways of being held right. as as we know it's a therapy. Like I think no. these guys are getting a second chance where they're able to bring in both some of their personal experiences of trauma, but also some goals, some visions that they have for a different kind of future. And so they take it very seriously. And I think, I think that what makes uh, an education experience in the prison so unique and so powerful. And I mean, at one point, I never thought I was even gonna take any college courses. I tried to drop out of eighth grade, and now yeah, I've done stuff that I didn't believe I could do. I've definitely changed the narrative and I'm surrounded by people that push me to do it every day. We work together on a daily basis towards the same common goal. That's something that prior to coming here was, was unheard of. Thank you, buddy. Okay. Class is over, so now we just head back home. Afari, see you next Friday. Okay, Eddie. I want to say uh, thank you for uh, you know sharing the day with us, being here, and uh, shout out to my family. Love you guys. Edwin. All right, man. Uh, would you like to share anything? Uh, yeah. No matter what your situation is, there's always a system out there, man. Seek it, find it, pursue it. Like your well-being is, is very important, and you do matter to everybody out there. And a big shout out to my family as well. I love you guys. Thank you guys. Markel, all right, man. Anything you'd like to say to people out there? Last words or something encouraging to the community? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, never give up and keep God first. You know what I mean? And uh, with that, you can go a long way. God bless. You got to keep pushing the way we're doing, man. Keep doing everything that we're doing. And uh, this is our raison d'etre. I'd like to say hi to my mom and my loved ones. Thank you. Thank you, Freddy. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay, Afari. And.
This is probably the best day of my life. I say this because what we were able to do today, tour the prison and see all the stuff that everybody's doing, and we're gonna be able to show this to the people out there in society. It's gonna change so many people's perspectives. Who knows what the ripple effect from that will be, right? I mean, you know, who would believe this? Who wouldn't call this something great, what we're doing right now, right? What we're gonna be able to show the world, right? <laughs> Nice and warm in here. This is it, we're home. Uh, it's eight o'clock. So I figured I'm gonna call it a night early. Um, it's been a long day. So off to bed. What would I tell the younger me um, that <laughs> I, I, man, stay in school, don't join a gang. Um, I, I wouldn't say that. I probably stay in. School. There's going to be hard times, but it's going to be okay. We're going to get through it, right? Because I got through it. There was so many times that I wanted to give up. I'm not gonna lie, right? I, you know, there was times I literally thought, you know, damn, suicide's probably a better thought, right? A better option, right? I went through times that were, that was a thought, you know? And um, obviously I'm glad I never chose that, right? Because I wouldn't be here and the plans I have now and what I want to do now and, you know, just change the world, right? Be a role model and inspire others. I would just say to my younger self, hang in there. Or to anybody going through something, hang in there. And ask for help. If you need help, you're going through tough times, talk to people, talk to people who care about you. There's people who care about us, you know, um, a teacher, a coach, um, anybody who you trust, you know, talk to them. Um, that's what I wish I would have done. It's never too late to realize what's important and fight for it. Look at me, I'm like the oldest one in my class and it's like, why should I bother doing this? Why should I still you know, finish college or even want to go after a master's and a PhD. By that time, by the time I'm done, I'm going to be like 50 years old, right? But it doesn't matter. I can be a role model and inspire others to do the same. And that'll leave a legacy behind, right? And that's what I want to do is leave a positive legacy. So it's never too late to realize what's important in life and fight for it. And Follow your dreams and dream big. If, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. And uh, my dreams scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Good night. What's that a hole? This moon, my mind keeps searching, but my heart decides thoughts can be cruel, they're not mine to own. The space unravels when you let go. The bird who walks the line, just use those wings and rise.
I don't know where you came from, but this road is yours to trail. Made to mold into a song that sung before your day. So you found the beat. The melody, the words to lift your soul. You were made with love. You were made with love. You were made with love for this world. Silence speaks under our feet. The room. Signal across the land. Oh, these cosmic plants vibrate, sending souls for helping hands. So you sow the seed and let it breathe until. Made with love for this world.